So there's a tax scandal brewing, a storm is coming involving the UK Chancellor. So Rishi Sanak is currently demanding a Whitehall inquiry to find out who leaked details about his wife's tax arrangements. This has been brewing for a while. Many Brits believe it's wildly and outrageously unfair that the Chancellor's wife can be non-domicile, saving millions in UK tax. However, I have a different view on this situation and I would love your thoughts because this does directly affect us with the cost of living hikes, fuel, inflation, energy, gas, food, tax, going up and up and up and up and up. So it directly affects us all. But my opinion is probably not going to be the same as most people's. So first off, let me let you know what's going on. I don't know if you've been watching, but the Chancellor Rishi Sunak is demanding a Whitehall inquiry to find out who leaked details about his wife's tax arrangements. Now, to be fair, one's wife's tax arrangements, could you argue, are separate to the Chancellor's and maybe none of the business of anyone else. So, I hope I pronounced this right. <laughs> Akshatamurti has said she will pay UK taxes on her overseas income following a row over her non-domicile status. So she is the wife of Rishi Sunak. She is non-domicile, therefore doesn't pay UK taxes, which, by the way, is completely legal and up to her and her affairs. And you could argue these are her private affairs and nothing to do with the way that Rishi runs the UK finances. You could argue that. Let me know what you think. So Rishi's wife owns 700 million in shares in the Indian IT giant Infosys. Infosys. <laughs> um, this was founded by her father from which she received 11.6 million in dividend income last year. That would have been about 2.1 million in tax, which she avoided, not evaded, because she is non-domicile. Now, being non-domicile is not illegal. It is legal. I believe if the UK treated tax more fairly, people wouldn't want to be non-domicile. Currently, I pay 70% in taxes in what I earn and what I draw and what I spend I pay 70% in taxes. Can you blame anyone for wanting to be non-domicile when you pay 70 pence in the pound in taxes? Who wants to do that? Corp tax is going up from 18 to 25%. That is still 20%. Do you know when the banks ruined the financial system in 2008? That was reduced and the banks were bailed out. And in this current economic climate... No one is being bailed out. The entrepreneur, the small business owner is not being helped or supported. And VAT is still 20%. It's freaking madness. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments. Hit the share button because I believe there's hypocrisy, but not where everyone sees it. Now, what Labour have done, Labour have accused Rishi of hypocrisy. Here's why. His wife is non-domicile. She's avoiding 2.1 million in taxes while... Our costs of living in the UK are going up and up and up. And I agree, by the way, I agree that cost of living is going up. Inflation, fuel, energy, food, tax is going up and up and up. But it's completely separate. It's nothing to do with Rishi's wife. It's nothing to do with it. And so they're trying to link things as a smear campaign on Rishi. And look, I do think the government are handling the situation of generating revenue post-lockdown badly. I think they should be encouraging you to start a business, give you subsidies and tax breaks and incentives to start a business. Fire up the economy. Build the overall economy. You know, the economy is trillions of pounds. So if you can add 5%, 10% in the economy, then that increase in the economy is going to generate a lot of the revenue that you need to pay all your billions in debts that you created. But instead, they're just taxing and, and punishing entrepreneurs and business owners. 
So let me know what you think about this. I've had some interesting comments I will reply to after this live video. Hit the share button. This is really important. Now, um, Mrs. Murti, who is Rishi's wife, has decided to change her tax arrangements and pay UK tax, even though she's non-domiciled, which I don't necessarily think she has to do or is fair. But what she has said is she doesn't want to be a distraction to her husband, Rishi Sunak. Um, and she has said that her tax arrangements are entirely legal. If she is legally non-domiciled, then they are. But she has said, it has become clear that many do not feel it is compatible with my husband's role as UK Chancellor. I don't agree with that. I understand and appreciate the British sense of fairness. This is, these are separate issues. And I do not wish my tax status to be a distraction for my husband or to affect my family. So, a, a, a leaked smear campaign and the sense of fairness of the UK has forced someone who can legally be non-domicile to pay taxes in the UK on revenue not generated in the UK. Why is that the right thing to do? Shouldn't we be looking for the UK Chancellor and the government to give us fair tax breaks, to give us subsidies and incentives and rewards and tax breaks to start and scale a business, to create revenue, build um, production and economy? People are doing everything in the wrong areas. They're getting pissed off with... Uh, Someone who they think, basically, it's because her and her family are billionaire. And so, oh, that's not fair, billionaire. Let's have all the money. And all these people who say that are sitting on their ass, not working, not producing and not creating. So, like I said, I don't, I don't agree with the prevailing narrative on this. So let me know what you think. Let me give you a quick reminder that there's a, a tax scandal going on that involves the Chancellor's wife. Now, Rishi, the Chancellor, is demanding a Whitehall inquiry to find out who leaked details about his wife's tax arrangements. She was non-domicile. She's allowed to be non-domicile. Her, her income is from India, not from the UK. But because of the smear campaign, she's decided to pay tax in the UK, even though she doesn't have to, to protect her family and appease this UK sense of fairness. But let's be honest. That 2.1 million a year that's going to come into the UK government, they're just going to frickin' spend it and waste it. It's going to go on parties and PPE that doesn't work and apps that don't work. The government are managing the money badly. So this is a distraction and a smear campaign. Here's what should be happening. The government should be reducing VAT, reducing corp tax, supporting small businesses to start and scale a business, to increase the economy so the overall economy is higher, so that we can create more jobs and we can earn more money and reinvest that into production and creation, and then the government can take their fair share. That's what should be happening. Why do the government not understand this? If you've got a goose and it's laying eggs, you go, hmm, I'm hungry. I'll slay the goose. Yeah, woohoo, we have a goose. Today we have a goose and tomorrow we have no eggs. The government do not fucking get it. And actually, the masses do not get it. Anyway, let me know what you think. This scandal is going to go on and on and on and on and on and on and on. And I think it's actually quite unfair. Apparently, there's this British sense of fairness. Oh, you should be paying UK tax because you're married to the Chancellor and it's not fair. Well, actually, no, she made all of her money in India. And she's bringing economy into the UK because she lives here. And her family live in London. What's she doing wrong? Of course, unless it's found that she is doing something wrong um, legally. But she's legally non-domicile. Smear campaign. Look, I've been saying where I believe the government are at fault. But in this instance, this is a smear campaign against Rishi. It's a distraction. It's only a couple of million quid anyway. Imagine if there were a million businesses started. Imagine if each, if each one of those businesses generated 100,000 or 500,000 a year. That's 100 million or 500 million a year in extra revenue created. And then there's all the jobs and then all the tax on top of that. If the government create more jobs, the government get their tax share of it. Remember the P&O ferries thing. P&O notified the government that they're going to have to make a load of redundancies. They made redundancies and then the government just threw P&O under the bus saying that that was against employment law. It was illegal. But they didn't do anything to help the um, thousands of people who got made redundant. The government needs to step up. The government need to increase overall GDP instead of just wasting all the money and taxing us more and more and more and more and more and more. 
They wasted, I'm, I'm estimating here, around 20 billion in PPE equipment they had to write off, an app that pinged the wrong people and basically made it impossible to trade through um, after lockdown. And then five odd billion in written off loans because they lent COVID loans to the wrong freaking people. The people who needed it, they didn't lend the loans to. The people who didn't need it and scammed them, they scammed them. And who's going to pay for that nearly 20 billion? You and me. Anyway, huh, rant over. Let me know what you think. Hit the share button now. We need to get this proper narrative out to the masses. We need to hold the government to account. Media spin, just freaking distraction. Oh, yeah, Rishi's wife, non-dom, she should be paying tax in the UK. That, that's a scandal. That's not fair. Let's attack her. Let's attack Rishi. No, let Rishi do his job. He's the UK chancellor. <laughs> Oh, hit the share button. Let me know what you think. All right. So quick summary. There's a chancellor tax avoidance scandal going on right now. Um, the chancellor's wife is non-dom, but she's decided to pay tax in the UK, even though it's entirely legal because she believes that um, many do, do not feel her non-dom status is compatible with her husband's role as chancellor. Nothing, nothing to do with it personally. You know, you're not here, sitting here on this live going, oh, Rob, what does your wife do? It's wholly relevant to your lives, what your wife does. No, it's not. Um, anyway, she says, I understand and appreciate the British sense of fairness. And I do not wish my tax status to be a distraction for my husband or to affect my family. I don't think this is right. Let me know what you think about this. Um, let's let Rishi do his job because he's got a hard enough job anyway. Hit the share button. Thanks for tuning in. And remember, if you don't risk anything.